Good evening, Facebook land, Facebook friends out there. Welcome y'all once again to my Facebook Live here at Baxter Cribs. Uh, and I am Baxter Cribs. Kind of forgot where I was going there for a minute. How about that? And once again, coming to you late this evening. Want to talk to you just a little bit today. I hope you've had a good day. In my events today, I found out, or not found out, there was quite a few decisions that had to be made, had to be made quickly, efficiently, and to the benefit of all who were involved. And so those were done. But what that brought to my mind, because it was part of the next chapter in the book that we've been following along here uh, by David Scaletti, is that making decisions is something that we, many times as entrepreneurs, as network marketers, uh, hate to do, or because we don't do it, it creates some problems in our own business. And so, therefore, we have to look at those things and say, you know, what what can I do, or what's stopping me from doing that? Because, see, it doesn't matter if you have the belief of the things that we just talked about, the belief in your products, the owners, in the network marketing industry, in, in your uh, team that you're around, and in yourself, if you do not ever make a decision to get started to move ahead, to get past this sticking point, to do whatever it is and make that decision and then get take action on that decision, then nothing ever gets done. So this is where I want to talk about this evening just a little bit. And as I said, this is the second page, the second uh, uh, chapter, it is a chapter in the next book, in the book of, that I've been talking about here from this guy here. You might want to get you a copy of this very good book. Uh, a lot of things involved in there. Kind of just going over the backgrounds of it for you. And so this evening I want to talk about here. We move to one side so you can see it in case you're taking notes or something. And that is we need to exercise our decision-making capabilities that we have. And first thing I want to talk about is the reason that we don't do that. And because we are capable of making decisions. In fact, we make them, <clears throat> whether we choose the right thing or the most efficient thing or not, we make a decision because, as I said, no decision is, in fact, a decision. So we start out, first of all, asking what are, what are some things that keep us from making decisions of moving ahead in our business to benefit ourselves and to benefit those around us and, and our future life. And the very first thing we want to look at here is procrastination. And procrastination is, as we've heard today, is putting off to, to tomorrow what we could have done today. Uh, and is becoming a very a, a pro at it, if you will. And, and you're casting it into the next day. And that's just something I just thought of right there. I don't even know if it made sense or not. But that's exactly what we're doing, isn't it? Whenever we're not making a decision to move ahead, we say, and I talked about this in another series where Brandon Richard has this and also... Um, uh, Ray Higdon talks about this kind of thing, that there are some things that we have in our life, and one of them is called doubt, delay, and division. And doubt and delay work very good right here. They're kind of the sisters with procrastination because they cause you to have some doubt in your life. And then it says delay this stuff till tomorrow, and you won't have to worry about that till today. You won't have to worry about that today. And so we put things off, and we put things off, and we should be really making a decision to eat that frog, as Brian Tracy says, and other people use his comments as well. And that is, you know, a frog tastes nasty if you think about eating one, but when you go ahead and eat that frog, you get that thing out of your way. You get it done, in other words. You get on it and move ahead. And that, so... This is one reason that we do not make decisions is that we put it off until tomorrow. We got to think about it some more. We got to look at some more facts. We got to get everything in line. And uh, many times when I come on these Facebook lives and you may can tell it and you may not, I do not really know. I think I have things written in my head. I have it in the book here in front of me and I write it on the board as I hear it, as I, as I gather that information. And then I say, am I ready to start? I write my title on there, and then I stand in front of that, and I go, okay, what am I going to say? And I say, never mind, just mash the button. If I don't go ahead and mash the button and get started, 
I have procrastinated and I could be at 11, 30, 12 o'clock tomorrow and we don't want to be in that stage because we want to do a video every day every day and become more efficient at it and and it helps out in doing it that way because as I had to gave a a short speech last night at a in the close of the congregation I attend and was able to get up without any notes thought about it, I think for a moment or two before I got up there thought about it actually throughout the, the 45 minute gathering and got up and done a speech for about five maybe seven minutes without any notes whatsoever. So it brings a great benefit when you just say, just do it. Get on up there and do it. So let's take and, and examine your life and say, okay, procrastination is keeping me from making decisions that I need to make to move ahead. The next thing that we have that stops us from doing these things is fear. Fear stops us from doing a lot of things, my friends. You know, we're afraid we're going to look bad. We're afraid they're going to laugh at us. We're afraid we're going to fail and we're going to fall on our face and we're just going to make a flub of it. And you know what? We really might do that. But if you get up there and practice it, you will overcome that fear. And it's kind of about, and David talks about it in his book as well, and I remember this very well. I was raised up on a farm where whenever we wanted to go swimming, we just went down to the creek and we had ropes hanging from the trees and stuff like that that we had created where you could just swing out and dive into the water. And it was nothing for us to dive out into that water or swing out there and just do a belly flop or, you know, bust your back on there as you came down to the water. And you get out there with a fishing pole and you beat the creek to make sure you run the snakes out before you jumped in. And we really had no fear of that. But then later on in life, we moved to town, and I got to go to town one day and see the recreation center, and this big old nice chlorinated pool there, and a high dive looked like maybe 20 feet up, you know, that you want to get off of, and so I climbed up on that thing, and when you get out to the edge of that board and you look down, it seems like a really, really, really long way down standing on that board. And so the first two or three times that I got up there, I actually had to back out the way and let somebody else, as they can run it by and jump off the thing like there was nothing to it. Finally, I made a decision to jump off of that. Just go out there and jump straight off and go down and get it over with. And so, you know, you fly right off into the bottom of the pool, you push yourself way back up, and all of a sudden, wow, that was exhilarating. And you get back up and you go do it again. And you so then after a little bit of practice of doing those things, you overcome just like we did of swinging out of the, out the tree into the creek and beating the water to get rid of the snakes. You, you had no fear of that. Now, I know I have more knowledge of that today about the creek. You have a hard time throwing me in the creek. But the fact is that we overcame a fear by practicing the things that we feared. And that's what we, he was talking about in his book. If you will take and go ahead and recognize it as fear, jump out there and get it done and do it a few times, the more you do it, the more the fear will diminish, and so, you know, the greater you'll become at that. But that's two reasons it stops us. Now he moves into, in his book, he talks about here, there's three decisions that he makes as he talks about there was a time in his life, not too many years ago, that he had to re-examine some things in his life and make some changes uh, because things weren't going exactly as he had hoped or had planned. And so he had to say, okay, what am I going to do? One of the things he came up with is he, looked, is he says that he was going to live for today. And, and that's a good philosophy because really in, in that idea now, we only have today and we're not promised all of today whenever we start the day. And so living for today, when you wake up and then you got your and you open your eyes and your feet touch the floor, be grateful. Be grateful that you are sucking air. Be grateful you can push yourself up out of that bed. Be grateful you got food waiting in the kitchen you can go in there and fix, a job to go to, or of whatever sort it might be, whether you have a day job, whether you have or whether you are or stay at home and you work from your office all day, or whatever it is that you might do. Be thankful you got family and friends and what you know, just be simply grateful for that day. Enjoy that day. You know, I have a friend that I work with, I don't really work with, he is a customer of my daytime job, and when I talk to him on the phone, on the phone, I always say, good morning, how are you? 
I said, and he said, I don't know, is it a good morning? And I always tell him the same things I just said to you. Well, you're sucking air, and you're standing in the sunshine, and you're talking to me, so it's got to be good so far. You know, and so we move on from that point, but he is he is always negative, and that can rub off on you if you're not careful. So, live for today. Do whatever it is, get up and say, I'm going to do the best I can today. The, se the second decision that he said he made, and I can see I need me a new pencil as it starts to get on down here. Um, it says, save for tomorrow. You know, like I said, we're not promised tomorrow. That does not mean it's not coming. And as the scriptures say, it's a wise man who lays up for his children. You know, and so, and I'll add to that, it's a wise man that lays up for himself so that when he gets older, he can enjoy the times with his children and also he can enjoy spending his children's retirement. So, you know, that's, that's the idea that he's talking about. And he refers back to the older times whenever people used to say all the time, is pay yourself first. When you get a paycheck, always put some aside every day, every day into a savings account. And, you know, and this is something that I do in in a certain way. I don't really do it in that way right now because I'm working on some certain growth factors. So I don't really pay myself a ton of money every day. First of all, I don't have a ton of money. But at the end of every day, whatever change is in my pocket goes into a jug I have under my counter. And at the end of every month, I take that down to the bank and put it in a savings account. And at times, it has ended up being two or three hundred dollars. Uh, and, you know, that's sometimes whenever I pick up extra money here or there that was not normally in my schedule to do or I didn't think I was going to get it, I throw that in there as well. And so that's those times whenever I have gotten extra money. And so that's paying myself in that way. But he's really referring to, if I understand his teaching that he's talking about, whenever you get paid, a certain percentage should go into a savings account for yourself. Just like myself, and this is something I do practice and have for many, many years, regardless of what goes on. Whenever I get my paycheck from anybody, however it is, I know, without a shadow of a doubt, 10% of that goes into for the Lord. And that's what I give every Sunday to the church because that's what I think that he teaches. I don't hold that to anybody's feet or anybody's feet to the fire over that. That is something I do. And therefore, I also take a percentage, a smaller percentage, and give to myself in a store, in a savings account, so that when I had that there for a later date, and I act like, just like I do with the other money that goes to the church, that's no longer mine. That's going to be used later on. So, save, save for tomorrow. Live for today. Save for tomorrow. And then the third thing, and I'm not sure if you can even see that right there. Uh, I'm looking in the wrong place. I got it right over here. Is to take action now. That's the third thing that he talks about in this. And so, like I said, you got to overcome your procrastination. You got to overcome your fear. And take action. You make that decision that today I'm going to get out here and do whatever it is that you got planned. You should have a daily mode of operation that you're working on. You should have several plans of things that you're doing. And you're going to say, right today, I'm going to make that happen. And you want to take action on the things that are going to produce income. You don't want to shuffle your business cards or write letterheads and stuff like that that do not bring you any money into your business. You want to take those things, that action of prospecting or writing emails to people or making uh, live videos or videos of some sort to put out before the people, creating ads and making those choices and getting those things to happen. You want to make choices that you and, and that are going to produce income for you and then you will find out that later on, or even right now, you might could make a decision that, well, this is something I can outsource. This is something I can outsource here. I can do that tomorrow. And you make better decisions when you start making decisions and you think about these things. Stuff can happen really quick sometimes, and you need to be able to make decisions. And you take action, and you get on it right then. 
in my day job that happens a lot people call in orders you get busy pulling it you got it pulled and you're ready to put it on a truck and they'll call in oh we got to make a change here I made a mistake then you got to start over but you have to make a decision to get started or you would never get anything out the gate same thing for yourself we have to make those decisions to get started on the income producing activities and take action quit procrastinating quit letting fear hold you back get started my friends I hope this has been a value to you if it has please share it with other people leave a comment below if you'd like to send me an instant message, we can talk some more about some other things to help get you started, uh, give you some more uh, counseling or coaching or some, any things that I can help out to make your business and your life move forward. I would like to help out with that. My friends, this is it for today or for tonight. Have a good night. Get up in the morning with having gratefulness in your heart whenever you wake up. Live for tomorrow or live for that day right then. Save for tomorrow and take action. Good night, my friends. We'll see you tomorrow.